Hello everyone, welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. In this episode we begin with our mission to Minmus which unfortunately does not have any control because the Kerbals have gone on strike. But we, I, I didn't really get much by way of suggestions as far as how to rescue it. The, the best thing was to launch our base again and try and capture it with our base. But that puts two mission elements in jeopardy and I don't like that. So we're going to avoid that idea. Um, another comment was maybe we could launch something, a, a probe core, really, really fast from Kerbin and try and intercept it. So I'm going to briefly do the calculations uh, on whether or not that's feasible or not and uh, to see whether it is. So let's do that. We see that our node is in 33 minutes and 7 seconds. I paused to avoid uh, reducing that. but. It would have been better if I had uh, managed to stop this a little bit further out from Minmus. But of course, uh, this is about where we lost the ability to control the vessel. Uh, so, yeah, 33 minutes and an exits in 3 hours and 9 minutes. Where is Minmus? Minmus, uh, in its orbit, is 46,400 uh, 46, kilometers in altitude. So, well, calculator is out. 46, let's say we wanted to intercept it at at the periapsis there. So that's 46.4 million meters. And how many seconds until we actually, uh, until that time? Well, let's just say 33 minutes to just round off. And so multiply by 60 for that. We would need to go 23,434 meters per second. That doesn't seem feasible. Now the exit time was in three hours and nine minutes. So, and again, we're using the altitude of Minmus from the surface of Kerbin, or it might be from the center of Kerbin, come to think of it. But that's not too different. So three hours nine minutes. That's 189 minutes. That means we have to go 4,091 meters per second. Now that's not 4,091 from Kerbin orbit because you know uh, if you depart Kerbin orbit, low Kerbin orbit at like 900 meters per second, by the time you get to Minmus you're going really slow. So it's actually the surplus, well I mean you could think of it, the midway between uh, low Kerbin orbit and Minmus you're probably going about 300 meters per second by that time. Uh, so that's about how much you get there. Really what we're talking about these is the excess velocity. We're talking about after you get past escape velocity how much do you need and that's the 4000 really uh, to make it really certain. So we would need uh, off of uh, low Kerbin orbit we need 4000 plus 1000 uh, because that's how much you need to escape so that's 5000 and then you'd need to dump all of that in order to match speeds with our target so we have to dump like let's say 4,000 and that means a total delta V of 9,000 in order to get to the target, intercept and uh, match speeds and then try and dock with it and then we'd have to carry mop propellant to dock with it. So that seems unreasonable. I don't think we're going to be able, uh, that's, that'd be very expensive for just a sort of rescue sort of mission and I don't want to spend that kind of fun uh, funding. So we're just going to try and grasp it as if it was an asteroid coming close to Kerbin and we'll launch and try and intercept it at periapsis or anywhere around here we'll be fine. Oh, I, I just noticed something else. Oh, there, what the happens when there is no longer their home? Because that's going to happen by the time we get back to uh, periapsis there, right? That's seven days, two hours, and 51 minutes. It's going to stop being their home right before that, unfortunately. So we're going to have to intercept it a little bit ahead of that. Or we could see what happens when it's no longer their home, which could be interesting. Um, supplies, also, we might have to carry some if we want to send them back out to Minmus again, because they only have 19 days now. So, yeah, this uh, has become more complicated. Transfer pod launch. Oh, 
Hmm. You know, come to think of it, why don't we use this trans- Does this transfer pod launch have a docking port that we could use to dock with this? Let's take a look. Well, yes it does. And as far as supplies are concerned, it does have some extra. So, we finally get to use our transfer pod launch. And we are going to intercept that other vessel. And pull it along. Um, well, it's gonna... Well, it does have enough Delta V to match speeds. So it'll just end up heading to Minmus as well, I guess. It's got mob propellant, RCS for docking. It's got a docking port. Hmm. Okay, sounds like a plan. Okay, well, it looks like I'm going to give the mutineers a chance to decide whether they want to be rescued or not, because we've got an intersect point there. It's in T-7 days and 2 hours, which means that it's just beyond the point where home expires for these guys. Could I find a point that is, you know, a little bit sooner? Maybe, but that's a lot of Delta V already. Uh, we're going to be doing three, uh, 679 meters per second there, and then another 200 over there, almost 200. I mean, I, we do have it, but then we also have to match speeds with the target, and also we have to have enough to get into orbit of Minmus after that. So I'm concerned about all of that, and the timing is just a little bit rough. Also, we don't really want to encounter the moon. Uh, you might think, oh, wait, maybe a moon assist would be good. Um, no, moon assists won't be good. <laughs> Most of the moon assists are not good. Anyway, we're not going that far out this time. And the reason for that is because even though it'd be nice to like boost out really far and then do the inclination adjustment there because we've got a relative inclination to the target of like 17 degrees. But uh, if we boost out really far, then the timing works badly because our orbit is like a day long. And so this is coming faster and faster and faster. And then if we're over here, when it gets over here, it'll round this whole thing in the time it takes for us to get over here. So we need a relatively short orbit in order to make sure that we can encounter it. The further out we go, the tougher it is to get the timing right. Honestly, the Alcor pod having only seven days of habitation is really weird. So I'm still miffed about that. Alright, um, throttle up and ignition. I mean, the Alcor pod is pretty darn roomy, especially compared to this. Once we get over there, you'll see this is far more cramped for Kerbals. Then again, it's only carrying one right now. Well, 0.0, .0 meters per second, it says. Okay, let's get rid of that. Uh, well, we can see that our maneuver is a little bit off. Let's use RCS to touch that up, maybe. I mean, you can see, with this orbit already, it jumps to there. One orbital difference, right? Okay, we'll go with that. We don't need any more spinning. Right, seven days and 28 minutes that's actually ahead of when their home expiry occurs so maybe we'll beat that should be interesting just watch then uh, then the habitation of this module will go down because we've got three extra kerbals and then it'll just be all bad again I don't know we'll have to see does this have a probe core by any chance? I don't think so. Yeah, maybe doing this without a probe core is sort of a dubious idea. But I, I really want to put this craft to use, so if it turns out that we've got two things that can't be controlled at the end of this... Hmm. It occurs to me I'm trying to hit it at the wrong location, aren't I? I'm trying to hit it after they pass by Kerbin. I should have hit it on this side. That's actually a mistake. I don't know why I was trying to hit it on that side, come to think of it. But anyway, 
<laughs> make things a little bit more narrow and tough on myself, of course. Thing is, they're not gonna meet Minmus on the next round anyway. Maybe I should reconsider this and send a... Uh, you know what? I'm gonna send a probe core up and put the probe core in the middle of the two of them. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Let me try and intercept that with a probe core before this gets to it. Ah, this is all very complicated. Yeah, I'm reconsidering the whole plan here because I think what's going to happen is um, our habitability is just going to collapse with the extra curvals and we have to wait longer than just one orbit to meet Minmus again. We're going to have to make orbital adjustments, Minmus has to make a whole orbit, so that's all very complicated. Yep, I'm going to add a little a little uh, intermediate pod. You know what? We'll, we'll add a whole habitability thing so that things will be able to dock to it on their way to Minmus. You know, if our Alcor pod wants to go to Minmus again, the Alcor pod will dock to it. It'll be sort of a cycler sort of thing. It won't be a perfect cycler because I don't know what the cycler orbit to Minmus would be. But yeah, that sort of idea. Let me go to VAB and work on that. Okay, well. As you might expect, I couldn't just like send up a probe core and even a probe core with supplies or something. I've decided to make something complicated. And what we have here is what I intend to be a Minmus cycler. So it's not just that little part there. This is actually, uh, well, I just didn't want to put a fairing around the whole thing because that would be horrible for the mass and also the aerodynamics. So we just have a fairing around the top even though this is all part of the same deal here and up till this point here. So that docking port's the end of it, and that docking port's the top of it and we'll just have, uh, we'll just dock the Alcor pod to one side and we'll dock the um, other vehicle to the other side and we have this inflatable module here, deploy and According to its requirements, if we take a look at colonization, uh, here expandable habitat, and it says 77 Kerbal months, so that should be all right. And it needs 8,000 material kits. Rather than carrying the material kits with the cycler, we've got it attached to this interstage base here, so it'll stay with uh, this disposable. Uh, stage with a skipper on it and we have a container of 4,500 and 3,600 so we'll have 100 left uh, because I just can't put a smaller proportion on I could put some small tank to make uh, small tanks to make the difference but that was too annoying so I'll just leave it be like that and so that will expand, they can habitat, mm, habitate that, and that should be sufficient hopefully. I don't know if I need to pack any machinery in there. Oop, didn't want to do that. Yeah, I don't know if I need to pack any machinery in there. Maybe I should just in case, why not, right? Mm, it's more expensive, but we've got a Nomomatic 25,000. I don't know if that's a good thing to have. It was under life support and it wasn't very heavy. Uh, I've put fertilizer in. there. It's supposed to convert the mulch and fertilizer into supplies. So we'll see how that works out. Yep, I, I decided that that might be a good thing to test on this particular cycler. And then we have liquid fuel. We have monopropellant there, more liquid fuel down here. This is actually our supply life support tank, but they're not supposed to be hanging out here for very long. Um, it says max two for the number of crew, but that's alright. Uh, they can spend time in the Alcor pod as well, or whatever pod attaches to it. Um, but the supplies are only meant to get them to Minmus. Uh, any pod that attaches can bring its own supplies, so we don't have to have a huge supply container on the cycler itself. And that, uh, that means that the cycler itself can have a fairly high delta V. And if we take a look at our delta V, 
The cycler has 5,027 meters per second thanks to nuclear engines, as you might have guessed from the fact that I was only packing liquid fuel. And they are on these external pods. They're, they're Nervas. Uh, they're full-size Nervas, so they're 2.2 tons. And uh, so no hijinks here. They are proper Nervas. And we want we wanted the extendable thing so that they can work even if they are uh, this is attached to some other vehicle. So that's the idea. Not much by way of RCS ports on here. Not many places to place them. I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, did I put lights? Not really. Um, I'll just use ambient light adjustment as necessary. Uh, maybe later on we'll have Kerbals slap some lights on. Maybe I'll sneak some lights in here so that they can do an EVA to do that. How about that? So we've got a KIS container here with inventory already and uh, lights. We'll uh, have two of these and two of these and we can do a special EVA to slap some lights on if we think that's a good idea. Okay. Oh, uh, we reached a uh, volume limit. Okay. Anyway, so let's package it up. The launcher, uh, skipper second stage, a recoverable colonization first stage, and boosters, which I hope will also be recoverable. So the only expendable portion that I intend is the skipper. Okay. So that's the idea. We do have a remote controller on. We don't have any any crew just checking everything looks good let's try it um, I think maybe some auto strutting is necessary because those boosters are hanging a little bit loose right now they're definitely tilting I didn't do any auto strutting on this yeah maybe some auto strutting let's bring this back in okay um, well, we got the world's first milestone escaping gravitational influence of Minmus, so we know our our mission has escaped Minmus SOI. Uh, the rocket is looking a little bit better now, though the sun is setting, so it's a little bit dark. But I think it's, yeah, it's looking like a legit rocket, isn't it? That is a serious looking rocket right there. And now the boosters are not wobbling thanks to auto strut. I auto strutted only minimal things, just uh, the container on top to heaviest part. I think this tank to heaviest part, and then the boosters. All right, so ignition and launch. Yeah, but I'd say that definitely looks legit, don't you? Let's see if it keeps, if it keeps uh, operating in a legit manner. I just realized something. I might have forgotten communication. I mean, we've got antennas in the KIS inventory. Hmm. Oh, shoot. What? No, 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 no. No. Hold on. Uh, I'll, I'll take manual control. Thank you. Jeez, it had some serious wobble there. Okay, booster set. Well, that's a nice look. Oh, uh, set. <clears throat> set. And ignition. Okay, and fairing separation. Those are not the fairings I'm looking for. We're uh, doing exactly right on fuel, I think. The boosters were recovered for 91.8% of their value because terminal velocity was a bit high, but I didn't want to slap more parachutes on.
once we get into space, we'll use the material kits because otherwise um, the second stage is gonna separate and we won't have the material kits anymore. Oh, I don't know if we can expand it automatically though. Does it require a. Uh, it requires a uh, Kerbal to expand it, doesn't it? Oh man. We can't automatically deploy it. Right. Okay. That's fine. Obviously, I had intended for the skipper stage to re-enter, but that's not going to happen now. Okay, well, what we're going to have to do is separate the fairing panels here that are blocking the nuclear engine. So that one. You can't separate all the these fairing panels by the way, otherwise it'll jettison the stage and we don't want to do that right now because then we'll lose the material kits. But we can get rid of those two and then extend the nuclear engines and get this to orbit. But we won't be able to deorbit that skipper stage. So that's sad. Mmm, that's showing no liquid, f oh, that's the wrong engine, that's why. Okay, we want to be very careful about staging, let's throttle this down, let's manually activate these engines. There we go. I don't want to hear the engine has no fuel sound from this one, so I'll shut that one down. The cycler has 5,000 meters per second on its own, but with the skipper stage tagging along, it's only got 3,000. Also, uh, with those panels on, our solar panels are blocked and we don't have fuel cells. We don't have fuel cells because we're not carrying any oxidizer in the cycler. So many troubles. I suppose we could remove one of those panels and I think structurally it'll still be alright, but it's a little bit dodgy. The thing is, I don't believe our Kerbal in the transfer pod launch is an engineer. I think we need an engineer to expand the module. Not 100% sure on that. Nope, Sigmar Kerman is definitely a pilot, so no help there. Alright, well, let's just send another Kerbal up on a very quick mission. Heck, uh, the Kerbal can occupy it. Well, it's really putting a strain on the Cycler if we actually have the Kerbal occupy it. We'll just send the Kerbal up and uh, bring the Kerbal back down. It'll be a very straightforward sort of mission. A single Kerbal pod. So, I ended up making two different systems in order to get our engineer to orbit and to our vessel awaiting him and this one is the one that's not going to launch this is called Dalek 1 and the reason I called it Dalek 1 is because when you look at it, it sort of looks like a Dalek I think uh, if I extend the engines it especially sort of looks looks like one uh, so I used this particular I've been wanting to use this for a while the sky crane thing and it doesn't have particularly good ISP, but it does have the benefit that it tucks the engines in so that I can put the heat shield here so that this can be returned. And it's got lander legs here, so it sort of lands like that. You'll note a lack of parachutes because it is supposed to make a powered landing. And in terms of delta V, it alone has 2173, so it could certainly try and make a powered landing in that case. Um, you can see the RCS, uh, though the legs sort of block the RCS ports down here when they're deployed. And of course, because we've got an engineer in the pod, we need a, a controller, so we've got one of those in there. And yeah, so that was the idea. But then I also wanted to recover the booster that was going to loft it up, because it's only got 2,173, it's going to be need to be lofted up. 
and I already had configured this big booster, this uh, linebacker booster, which has gimbling, and it was configured with the parachutes, right? I already calculated that I had enough parachutes to be recoverable. Uh, so that was nice and all, but the max thrust weight ratio was rather high. So yeah, we, we had a completely recoverable system, but it was sort of too expensive, I felt, too heavy, and uh, it had a potential thrust weight ratio issues. So I thought better of this, and also I remembered that I had this pod, this herp pod. And I thought maybe the herp pod would be a better thing to use because it's lighter overall. So it doesn't need quite as much effort to loft it up. So let me open up that version. Rather than being called something uh, fancy, I call this one Service One. And we've got, uh, let me just show you the craft here. This is the actual spacecraft. I'm not too sure about the wisdom of having you know this heat shield here and then it's rather tall compared to the heat shield right so there are orientation issues and potential heating problems also uh, this does have parachutes so it's intending to use the parachutes for return and it does have a thousand four hundred forty seven meters per second but much of that will be taken uh, taken getting to orbit so that is the rub good thrust weight ratio though uh, in terms of the parachuting, I did scale them down. They're 64% of their normal size, and it looks like 4.5 meters per second. That's a bit overdoing it. I thought I had scaled it down so that every time it tries to calculate how much it changes on me, I don't need it to be that slow. About six, then again, I have to take into account the fact that the heat shield is going to stay on. We're going to bring that back. But yeah. Uh, no fancy legs, uh, nothing too fancy at all. Uh, the engines here are the, let me get rid of that, the Maat engines uh, scale down, so they're 0.5 meters, so they're much smaller. It's got supplies, it's got RCS, uh, the RCS thrusters are also scaled down to 50%, and yeah, it's just a tiny little package of fun. So that's that. Then we had to figure out how to launch it, and I just went with a single LV uh, T45 because gambling is a nice thing to have and it is meant to be recoverable. So you see the parachutes there, stage recovery says 5.9 meters per second, so that's excellent. We've got floats on this side, the parachutes on that side. Because of the fins, we expect that it'll be going this side down because the fins will force it that way, and then the floats will. Uh, help to save it and hopefully keep it steady on this side so it doesn't tip over and our engine will be dry. That's the idea anyway. Uh, what we've got in the middle here though is oh, this is a NAT solid fuel booster and the reason we're using it is because if we don't then the first stage will get too far out and face re-entry heat and it won't be quite as easy or realistic to recover. Uh, so we have this, this interim stage that just gives 739 meters per second and it has, uh, if we can, let me close this for a sec, it has 250 vacuum ISP which is not bad, it's much better than the other SRBs in that respect. So we, we do have okay performance for an SRB and all to, the downside is that no gimbling, right? So we might need to turn on the RCS thrusters on the payload in order to make sure that we have control. But otherwise it'll just be disposable. It's only 100 credits and most of that is the cost of the fuel. Oops. And if we take a look here, the fuel cost is 72. So the what if we tried to recover it, we'd only get 28 credits back anyway. So funds. So yeah, I think this should be an interesting system to try and deliver the engineer in. Of course, we have the the probe core here. That's what uh, the parachutes and batteries are covering. Okay, so this is the one we're going to try. Okay, another message. It looks like we recovered a stage, and that is the core stage from the Minmus Cycler launch. So that's good. Okay, we don't really want to wait because we've got 
lots of stuff depending on this. We do want to target the Mimis Cycler, but we shouldn't be in a bad inclination for that. I suppose we could wait a little bit to a little bit to make sure that it comes around. Our engineer is already consuming supplies though, but we have more than enough. Okay, right about there should be fine. Okay, um persistent rotation. Can't you uh oh yeah, the that window does not seem to work anymore. So I can't really get rid of the persistent rotation window. Okay. Ambient light adjustment is do its doing its thing. Throttle up, SAS is on. And off we go. I guess we can actually because of the fins we could coast up a little bit. Yeah, good. And let's get rid of the fairings now. Okay. Now I'll get rid of the booster. You can be very calm about this. The tiny bit of reaction wheel control seems to be working. It's only the reaction wheel control in the pod, which is I think like 0.3, and then the and then the probe core. But I'm hoping that that might be enough to handle this SRB. So here we go with the SRB. Well, as expected, we're going to have to use a lot of fuel from our spacecraft in order to get to orbit. But as far as it went, the SRB was successful. Let's set. And here we go. Got closest approach distance to the target. I suppose we might as well try and match it and then get as close as possible. Of course, this is highly inefficient the way it's played out, but we really can't have the engines blowing at the heat shield, but maybe I could tilt it in a little bit more for the future. So once the closest approach distance has hit a minimum, I'll cut the engines and then we'll coast. Okay, that was the minimum. Alright, so instead of pointing this direction, let's go negative relative velocity. Looks like close approach will be in four minutes. That's handy. Good timing. Saved us some uh, fuel I'm sure. Let's turn on the lights in the pod. Uh, I don't... okay that's good. Doesn't look lit inside through the window though. I'll take what lighting I can get. It's almost like a Soyuz, but not quite, right? Because obviously the Soyuz doesn't have the heat shield down here or anything, or a hundred... But in general shape, it has a Soyuz-ish feel to it. Okay, matching speeds with the target now. There it goes. It's floating right by there. We've made orbit. Nope, went too far. Yeah, the RCS, even though it's scaled down, feels a bit too powerful. I might as well deploy the solar panels while we're here, even though it's on the nighttime side. I think my the lights I have on here are actually lighting up Kerbin itself. 
Those are really powerful lights. Yeah, look at that. I mean, the sun's got nothing on me. Yeah, that might be... Those lights are OP. Definitely. Oh, the sun though. Nope, I think I'm still definitely overpowering the sun. Alright, I think we're sufficiently parked. Hopefully. Alright, time to EVA and do the thing. Don't knock anything. Okay, deploy. And um, get out of the way because that thing is going to expand. Okay, that's expanded. It says perform maintenance. I don't know if I should or not. But anyway, let's get the antenna placed. And then we can bring him back down. Okay, and we need his inventory. Let's grab... Uh, let's place both in 10 eye, why not? Okay, and let's close this inventory. Let's just stick it on right about there. Oh, right, I have to equip. Um, skip to cancel. Equip. No, I didn't want to pause the game. I just tried to cancel that. H. Okay, and let's extend that antenna. And then we can put one on the other side. And extend that one too. Uh, pretty good. Pretty good on the symmetry there. Let's get back to our craft. This is a serious space mission we've got here. I wonder what perform maintenance means. Okay, grab. Please don't bounce off. Okay, good. Board. All right. Uh, mission successful, right? I think so. We'll have to get rid of that stage now, and in theory the material kits are gone. Yes, they are, all except for that 100, as we expected. But we'll take care of that in a bit. Let's focus on getting Hallery Kerman back home. Mm, well, I don't want to wait until KSC is on the daylight side, even though that'd be visually very nice. Time-wise, we've got other things to do. So we're over there. Let's time up a little bit and then we can deorbit from that periapsis. We could probably wait actually, because the periapsis is so low, 82 kilometers. Alright, make sure we're not gonna bump into the station, looks fine, and retro. Okay. Well, let's get the solar panels back in. We are well charged. We've got plenty of mop propellant to hold our orientation, should the uh, tiny bit of reaction will control not be enough. By the way, on the supplies, I actually filled them only halfway to save mass because we definitely didn't need uh, the full amount of units there. We could probably have done with only a tenth if I wanted it to have just that much. Um, I don't know which orientation is best. The orientation that doesn't have everything explode. Um, let's keep it to there. And we'll see. Let's hope for the best. Well, so far we're, we are holding orientation just fine. Below 40 kilometers now. We're now below 30 kilometers. Below 1500 meters per second. And we're approaching max G load. And the max G load will be 
2.73 G's. Not bad, but we did overshoot quite a lot, so we're all, all the way over to the eastern peninsula now. Yep, uh, probably shouldn't have waited on the deorbit burn as much as I did. But no matter. Okay, time for parachutes. I mean, I guess we could do a propulsive landing. But parachutes are nice too. Whoa, provided they open. Whoa! What? What? Why didn't my parachutes open? Ah, Poor Hallery. Why didn't the parachutes open? Hmm. Is there some sort of tweak scaling bug? Well, that sucks. Yeah, I know. Vessel is destroyed. Thanks. Jeez. Well, that's... That's rough right there. Okay, what's up with these parachutes? Oh! Some of the altitude... Wait a minute. So, when it scales, does it like scale the altitude or something? No. Why was the altitude set at 100? Is that like... Well, that can't be default. We've brought stuff back before. Maybe I accidentally hit it? Yeah, so apparently... I didn't even pay attention to that because normally I never change the altitude for deployment. Uh, so by default, what is it? Yeah, it's a thousand. So at some point it decided to become a hundred. At some point also the minimum pressure went to 0.34 when normally it's at 0.04. As far as whether the parachutes could have handled this, it did have some extra fuel left over. But uh, even with tanks full, uh, 5.3 meters per second, it's still looking at with the heat shield gone, but I think even with the heat shield it should have been like 6 or something. So yeah, but uh, somehow let's let's make sure that we save it with properly configured parachutes this time. But uh, I don't think that's a glitch, that's just my mistake for not checking that. And let's get minimum pressure to 0.2 I think is fine, well that's fine too. Let's make sure symmetry works. Okay, and recalculate. Well, that doesn't matter for the rest of it. Um, well, this is weird. Oh, uh, that's because it's on full. Yeah, okay. Yes, everything seems to be alright. But, not for Hallery. I think Hallery might be the first Kerbal we've lost in this series. I mean, in the revamp. Uh, season 3 of colonization if you will. Let me check. And then I guess we'll take a peek at our cycler and next time we'll have to do the actual mission with it. Took me a long time to build the craft. Yeah, well, missing in action Hallery 1. So yeah, poor Hallery. I don't know if the settings mean that he's gonna come back, we'll see. But anyway, Let's take a look at our cycler. Okay, well, we can ditch the skipper stage now. I guess we could go suborbital so that the skipper stage gets ditched into the atmosphere. We're close to apoapsis right now, so it is relatively safe to do that. Okay, here we go to deorbit it. That should be good enough. Okay, separation. Oh, I should have separated it off in the other direction. It would have been better. Okay, well, let's pull away. Let's uh, sidestep a bit. And prograde. Because this part needs to be back in orbit. We'll park it there for now. You know, these solar panels really should have been moved up a little bit. I don't know how they got that far back, but they're really making it hard to dock with this thing. 
without bumping into them. So that's not good. Okay, well let's get into the light properly. And see what it looks like. All deployed and everything. I mean, when they're turned that way it's good. I guess uh, the way we could do it is we could have it tail facing the sun and then, or nose facing the sun is fine too. And then the solar panels will be flat like that and then it'll be easier to dock. So there you go, that is that is the cycler. And next time we'll have to do the actual mission with it, which is to dock it with the failed, well, semi-failed Minmus mission, which is coming around this way. And also get the transfer pod launched to dock with it. And then we'll just send everything over to Minmus for the heck of it. I don't know why we're going to be getting the transfer pod launch attached to it, but now that that thing is in a high orbit, we might as well. Okay, so that is the story for next time. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.